Hi, everybody. I'm Riley Dickens with Encryption Consulting, and today we're exploring certificate policies and certificate practice statements. These two documents are usually created post PKI installation and are necessary for any PKI. You'll see the reason they're so necessary later in the video. The certificate policy, or CP, sets out all the rules for the PKI. It discusses the different rights and responsibilities of members of the PKI, as well as the different CAs in the PKI. The CP is publicly displayed, usually on the organization's website, by the different CAs. The CP can have legal effect if it is specified in the certificate policy. Also, if a PKI audit occurs, the certificate policy is the first place an auditor will look. They will make certain that the CP has all the necessary components and that all rules in the certificate policy are being followed. Users of the PKI can find any information relating to their role in the PKI, including how to request a certificate in the first place within the CP. To create a CP, the PKI owner can use RFCs, such as RFC 3647, which helps owners ensure that their certificate policy contains all the components needed in the CP. The components that make up a CP are the operational requirements, identification and authentication, technical security controls, policy outline, certificate and CRL profiles, rights, liabilities, and obligations, and community and applicability. Each of these sections highlights a different rule relating to PKI. The other document created after implementation of a PKI is a Certificate Practice Statement, or CPS. The biggest difference between the two is that the CP tells users and managers what needs to be done in a PKI, while the CPS tells them how to do it. The CPS is the procedures required in a PKI to ensure each policy in the CP is followed. Each CA can publish their own CPS, but more commonly, only one CPS is created for the PKI as a whole. The procedures outlined by the CPS touch on issuing, managing, and revoking certificates. CPSs can be used for legal proceedings, but more often than not, they're not used in a legal capacity. They will, however, likely be reviewed in a PKI audit. The sections that make up a CPS are the introduction, identification and authentication, general provision, technical security controls, operational requirements, certificate and CRL profiles, specification administration, and physical, procedural, and personnel. As you can see, many of these sections overlap with the CP since the CPS is meant to highlight the certificate policy. That's all I have for today. Thank you for watching and please visit our website encryptionconsulting.com to learn more about data security and PKI terminology.